the college football experience. Louisiana Monroe ULM Warhawks 2022 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is presented by WinBet. Bet fifty dollars at WinBet, get two hundred dollars in free bets. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Download the WinBet app now or visit WinBet.com. That's W Y N N Bet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by Sleeper. You already play fantasy with sleeper, but now you can win cold, hard cash with their brand new over under game. Just head to sleeper.com slash SGP on your phone to join the SGPN group and sleeper will automatically match your first deposit up to a hundred dollars at sleeper.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by IP vanish. Yes. IP vanish is the official VPN of SGPN and they're offering 70% off. If you go to IP vanish.com slash SGP, once again, that is IP vanish.com slash S G P. We're also brought to you by SGPN Discord. Yes, make sure you check out our new Discord server, the perfect place to interact and sweat out bets with the entire SGPN crew. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. This is Mike Leach, uh, head football coach at Mississippi State, and you're listening to SGPN Let It Ride. Yes, yes, yes! Welcome, welcome to the college football experience. U L M Louisiana Monroe 2022 season preview episode. My name is Colby Swinging Database Dan, aka Pick Done D. That's not a pick. This is a pick. Nobody knows nothing. Somebody knows. Double the price. But no one touches Dundee. <laughs> oh, yes! You know I love ULM and I'm with the guy. Oh, I can't wait to talk about this. I cannot wait to talk about this. We love Sunbelt. We love Funbelt, Sunbelt Woo. action. Woo. I honestly really like they're like my favorite conference now, I feel like. So shout out to the Sunbelt. Shout out to ULM. And I can't wait to talk about. T- Terry Bowden's bunch. I am joined by my co-host, former, former JMU Duke defensive back. Give it up for the burrito eating, sideline kiss stealing, wheeling and dealing, Patty C in the place to be. Hi, oh, <laughs> I gotta take my hat off and praise Patty C. If you follow us each and every year, we do uh, we t- we do a team preview for each and every team in the land, and uh, we do a locks episode with our best locks in in, in mid August, I would say. Well, me and NC Nick locked. Well, I'm sorry, laughed at Patty C's lock of ULM over two wins, I think it was, <laughs> and he not only delivered. He fucking hammered it. Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you one other thing too. I damn near, I damn near predicted a Louisiana Monroe upset of LSU. Yeah, that score is a little <laughs> deceiving. You look at that LSU score; it's twenty-seven fourteen. But that was a that was like a twenty to fourteen game with like a couple minutes left. I feel like, if I remember correctly, they were in that game yes. for a long, long time. And and Terry Bowden. Continues to be, I think, an underrated coach. But, but Patty C. I mean, first off, yeah. Morgantown, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Good old Morgantown, Morgantown WP. Terry Bowden did go to West Virginia, so shout out to West Virginia Mountaineers. But I mean, dude, Terry Bowden. He is 179 and 122 as a head coach, four and eight at ULM. But you, when you consider they were 0 and 12 the year prior, great first year. I'm going to go ahead and say it. And look, even though they lost their last, I think four or five. Let me pull up the. Let me double check my schedule here. I think they lost the last five, with the exception to the App State game. They bought in, man. They lost these games close. Louisiana went what 13 and one a season ago, Patty C. Yeah, sounds right. They were at 
Cajun Field in Lafayette. They lost by five. They mm. gave them everything. LSU at Tiger Stadium the week prior. They gave them everything. Stayed in that game. Only lost by thirteen. Uh, against Arkansas State. Now Arkansas State was bad, just like ULM. ULM probably wishes they got this one, but they only lost by three. ULM was for most of the game fourteen points worse than Alabama was against LSU. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, at Texas State Bobcat Stadium, they only lost by eight. They upset the Liberty Flames with Malik Willis last year. Uh, this team was a bit better. Then I think a lot of people penciled them in, and I, I'll take my hat off to you here. The, you killed it here. I questioned the hell out of that play, well, and, and you got it done. So I uh, thank you, thank you. I mean, check that door for heat, Sam. Check that door for heat, Sam. I mean, shit, you're coming through with some heat. Well, let me tell you this. My <laughs> don't give me too much credit because a lot of what my prediction was based on was Rich Rodriguez and his son. Rich Rodriguez is offensive coordinator and his son taking over the quarterback position. The offense was not the strong point of uh, this team last year. It doesn't matter. Rodriguez w- is, is still, I think it's an up upgrade from what they had offensively. And I think Terry Bowden in general brings winning pedigree. You look at every stop he's been. Uh, I I think he's severely underrated. You he go is. back to Salem university in the early eighties. He made them a winner. He went to Samford, made them a winner. Went to Auburn, had an eleven and zero season in ninety three, a nine and one season in ninety four, a ten a ten win season in ninety seven. Then at North Alabama, and then even at I just Akron. looked it up. North yeah. Alabama, he's their winning is uh, coach by win percentage in program history. That that program's dating back to nineteen forty nine. Uh, Akron. He took them to their only bowl game. All right, or their only two bowl games. Took them to the MAC championship at, at Akron. He's I think a that's what I'm saying. I think, I think uh, you, uh, I thought it would, t- I, I loved the hire when it happened, yeah. but I thought it would take some time. So I was not on it last year. I thought it would take a year, maybe two. Well, here we are. And I, I mean, <laughs> I guess we'll get to it. Subscribe on YouTube uh, as we break down every team in the land. But if you're on YouTube, you can see the graphics. shout out to the SGP and graphics team and the TCE graphics team. But um, I, I think if you're a ULM fan, you're thinking, Hey, we got a steal in this coach and what can we turn this into now? Let, let's hop into it. Patty C because uh, rich rod leaves for Jacksonville State. He's now the head coach of Jacksonville state who will jump up to the FBS next year. Um, so they're still in the FCS this year. New offensive coordinator is Matt Kubik and Matt Kubik was formerly a, a ULM offensive coordinator in some of their best years back with Caleb in the Caleb Evans era. Where where their offense was really putting up so, some big time numbers. I want to say uh, uh, they had. I, I I rattled off this number before. I thought to you, but when the, when did he join them? I, I'm looking back. He was there for at least. Uh, I think from 16 to 19, right? I think so. 16 to 19. So uh, I mean, this is a guy ULM produced 500 yards or more. You know, in 13 games, they were nine and four in that record during that three year stretch. And they averaged, you know, 182 yards rushing on the ground and 263 yards passing for 445 yards a game and 31 points. So I, I kind of like, I mean, look, Rich Rod, I think he would have continued to get this offense yeah. to going in the right direction, but he's gone. Well, the thing about Rich Rod's offense is we've seen it a million times before when he came to Michigan and he had a bunch of slow fat white guys running his show, right? That offense sucked. He got some speedster in, speedsters in there. And that offense took off. Same thing at Arizona. He didn't have that year one at uh, Louisiana Monroe. It would have happened eventually, but uh, Cubic steps in here and is probably going to have a better offense right yeah, off the bat. I, I tend to think so. I mean, well, the, another thing is they started a freshman quarterback a lot of the games last year, yeah. and that's a, another reason to be excited. Red Rodriguez went down with what a punk, punctured uh, lung was it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The Arizona transfer, the son of Rich Rod. Now, now uh, we'll talk about that. Last year they were 110th in scoring offense, 95th in rush offense, 102nd in pass offense, and 115th in total offense. Not good. I mean, but Rich Rod had that actually improved from the year prior, but. Eight starters are back on offense. Last year, Chandler Rogers, their quarterback, was a freshman. Freshman blues, Patty C. All right. Only started what the second half of the uh, year. Yeah, he's back though. I think just more familiarity in, in as a starting quarterback, being the man, is a good thing to have. Their starting running back, Andrew Henry, is back. All three wideouts are back. Patty C. Zach Jackson. Uh, J- Javon Fret. They even have Tyrone Howell transferring in, and then don't forget about. Uh, 
our guy. I think you're excited. You you mentioned him uh, in prep. Yeah. Uh, Boogie Knight. Boogie Knight. You're celebrating with your appetite. Bad round. You're losing. You're using your appetite to forget about the round. I'll tell you something about appetite. It's a real fucking great thing to have. You know. You know Boogie Knight. Son of Bob. Knight. Maybe he's the son of Bobby Knight. <laughs> I'm hoping so. So well, it's easy to see a tide turn. He is a big, bright, shining star. And uh, he is going to do his thing again. What do you have? 45 receptions last year. So they're bringing back their three starting wideouts and they have a transfer coming in that is going to be in that mix. that I think might start and bump perhaps fret. Uh, They are breaking in a new tight end. It's supposed to be Zach Rasmussen. Maybe the son of Blair Rasmussen, former Denver nugget. Hello. (laughs) I don't know. I'm talking out of my ass, (laughs) but three of five starters are back on the offensive line led by left tacker, Victor Cutler. They also have a, a, a nice Juco transfer coming in at the center spot, Zarian McGill. So I think in a way you could argue you're going to have four or five as pretty solid offensive line players for ULM standards. Yeah, um, let me tell you what though, preseason all conference, despite how many on offense, eight returning starters. Yeah. Only one is on any of the first four preseason all conference uh, teams. First thing to it's boogie uh, night as a third team. And wide they, they probably also ca- called for them to go one and 11 last year. That's true. That's you know what? I think it's good when they do that. Cause then the coach can, can put that thing up in, yeah. in the locker room and say, fuck you. Yeah. It's fantastic. It. Yeah. Yes. Defensively. Now I like this last year, just ninth in the sun belt and, and 110th in scoring defense, 68 in rush defense, 125th in pass defense, charting at one twelve overall. So in comes in Vic Koning. If you're a Wyoming Cowboy fan, Vic Koning was a uh, a head coach there back in the I think the late '90s, early 2000s. But why I like him is first off, he's got ties to Tommy Bowden, so he called up brother and said, "Who should I get to fix this defense?" But he's a Bill Snyder guy, Patty C. And yeah. if you if you look at what he did uh, with K State, when when uh, remember when uh, when Ron Prince kind of took the the, the K State program down a little bit, well, yeah. in comes in Bill Snyder, hires uh, Vic Koning. They go from the 118th defense to the 38th defense. Then Conan gets hired away by Ron Zook at Illinois. They go from the 91st defense to the 38th defense wow. and then the seventh defense in the country the following year. Dang. I think this is a really good hire for them. I think it's a really good I hire mean, for them. Maybe that's uh, Terry Bowden's uh, one of his secret weapons is his ability to evaluate coaching talent and bring it on board. I can tell you this. And if you look at the defense, you say, Oh, they run this three, three, five, only six starters back on defense, but two of three back on the defensive line led by nose, nose guard, uh, Caleb Thomas. So I'm okay with that two of three back. Okay. Linebacking core. We circle that just one of three back and that's Zach Woodard, but three of five back in the secondary led by free safety, Nick Roberts, their kicker and punter are back and they play some close games. So that kicker, one of the best in the Sun Belt. Uh, what do you make of all that? Uh, the team's got to be better than it was a season ago, right? It does bode well. I don't know if they're going to be better, but I think on paper, they kind of appear better. On paper, I would say that too. Uh, T- Terry Bowden, by the way, you know that movie Up? With no, the old man I with don't. the uh, <laughs> the horn rim glasses. It's like a cartoon movie. He kind of looks exactly like uh, you. You can't look at Terry Bowden and not be a fan of him. Yeah. He's, it's like a fat. I guess this is a bad example, but a fat Joe Paterno. There was a time <laughs> when that was very likely. He doesn't have thick frame glasses. Uh, Terry Bowden? Yeah, does he? Now he does. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I like Terry Bowden. Thought he got a raw deal at Auburn. <laughs> everyone else in the SEC was cheating. No, no, he's the guy. Put him on probation. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, because everyone knew Bobby Bowden was doing it so much, they blamed it on Terry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna get to the transfer portal and uh, uh, some other uh, the recruiting rankings. Talk a little ULM recruiting. You know they're there in that rich state of Louisiana, and uh, we're gonna go game by game on the schedule, project how we think it will shake out, and also talk about what Las Vegas expects from the Warhawks. But first, I gotta get us paid. I want to tell you that the college football experience ULM Warhawks 2022 season preview episode on the sports gambling podcast networks presented by win bet bet $50 at win bet and get $200 in free bets, bet big win bigger with win bet. Download the win bet app now or visit winbet.com. That's W Y N N bet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by sleeper. You already play fantasy on sleeper, but now you can win cold, hard cash with their brand new over under game. Just head to sleeper.com slash SGP on your phone to join the SGPN group and sleeper will automatically match your first deposit up to a hundred dollars. 
That's sleeper.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by IP vanish. All right. IP vanish is the official VPN of SGPN and they're offering 70% off of if you go to ipvanish.com slash SGP, 70% off. All right. That's ipvanish.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by SGPN discord. Yes. Make sure to check out our new discord server, the perfect place to interact and sweat bets with the entire SGPN group. Uh, so just go to sports gambling podcast.com slash discord. We're also brought to you by our home run derby contest. Yes. SGPN is running a free home home run derby contest exclusively on the SGPN app, which is free to download. Winner gets a $200 gift certificate to the SGPN store. So come on, let's do this. Let's have some fun. We're also brought to you by trade coffee. Trade coffee connects customers to the freshest and best tasting coffee they've ever made at home by partnering with the country's best craft roasters. These are independent businesses from big cities and small towns. All right. And trade customers are truly impactful for these independent roasters, often being the largest source of new growth for them and get this. It's expert tasted. Yes. Trade coffee's team actually taste tests thousands of different coffees and they keep f- over 450 different kinds live and ready to ship out every single day. There's no one perfect coffee, but there is a perfect coffee for you. All right. And trades human powered algorithm is going to find it for you. All right. I, I mean, I can't recommend this stuff enough right now. Trade is offering new subscribers, a total of $30 off your first order. Plus free shipping. When you go to drinktrade.com slash SGP, that's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Ooh. That's like a thousand dollars at Starbucks, right? Get started today by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com slash SGP and let trade find you a coffee that you'll love. All right. We are back on the college football experience. And Patty C. I mean, it's easy to see a tide turn. I can tell you this: it's easy to see a tide turn. But Terry Ballard, old school, he's old school a little bit because when it comes to the transfer portal, not well, his forte. Huh? I mentioned wide receiver Tyrone Hal. He's penciled in as a day one starter. He's a wide. Re- he's a transfer from Kansas State. Besides that, they went out and got linebacker Jackson Bailey from Arizona, who I think might be a starter too. They needed, like I said, only one returning starter at linebacker. So there's that. All right. However, that's it. <laughs> that is it. Uh, they lost cornerback Josh Newton to TCU. They lost defensive lineman Miles Cole to Texas Tech. They lost linebacker Keyshawn Johnson. Just give him the damn ball. Hello. Uh, he's still in the portal. Uh, wide receiver Jonathan Hado is still in the portal. Quarterback Haynes Crockett is in the portal. Uh, wide receiver Jaquan Bloomfield is in the portal. They lost offensive lineman Zach Bro to Jackson State and Deion Sanders. Mm, mm. They lost quarterback Jeremy Hunt to the portal. Safety Nick Roberts went to SMU. Wide receiver Perry Carter is in the portal. Wide uh, running back Caden Roach is in the portal. Uh, offensive tackle Willie Tyler went to Rutgers. Sheesh. Offensive lineman Connor Parsons is in the portal. Uh, linebacker Taylor Beal is in the portal. Uh, offensive guard Evan Henry went to Jackson State and Deion Sanders. Defensive lineman Edward Harrelson is in the portal, and defensive lineman Marcus Moore is in the portal. This we we grade the portal for every single school. Like I said, we do this for all 131 teams. Subscribe to the College Football Experience. However, Patty C. They flat out lost. There's no arguing this. They brought in how many players? Two. Two. It's good for 136 nationally. They f- they flat out lost the portal. Tell me about recruiting rankings. Six within the conference there. You know what's funny though, from a uh, transfer standpoint, Terry Bowden's actually kind of improved their uh their standing within the transfer portal and their use of it. Now I don't know how accurate uh twenty four seven sports transfer portal rankings are because the transfer portal only really started firing up a few years ago. Yeah. But their ranking since twenty nineteen, three twenty, one sixty eight. In Bowden's first year, they jumped to seventy five. With Rhett Rodriguez probably yeah, part of true. that. Yeah. But one thirty six this year, so well, Not- I can tell you this, at least two of the two guys they got, I think will you'll be seeing them on the field. I, I almost want to say both will be starting quality, but, not yeah. quantity. I think both will be starting, but there you go. Um, talk to me about recruiting in general. Recruiting. I mean, this is a, uh, this isn't a strong point for them uh, nationally in the last five years, 118, 123, 123, 92 and 133. Again, Terry Bowden had a nice initial recruiting class, but kind of despite the increase in wins, wasn't able to capitalize in the recruiting portal within the conference for the last or previous four cycles. Uh, this is out of 10 teams, 10, eight, 10, five. 
And now the Sun Belt expanded to 14 teams, and they're number 13, only ahead of JMU, unfortunately. So uh, enjoy that. Screw you guys. Um, their four year composite rank is pretty consistent 114, 117, 114, 115. Mm. They are who they are. They're not that talented. Is this quarterback you, though? When who you think got? about Doug Peterson, who's now the head coach of what I think the Jacksonville Jaguars won the Super Bowl with the Philadelphia uh, Eagles. <laughs> I almost said 76ers. I need any more coffee. Uh, Stan Humphreys. All right. It's true lawn chair. <laughs> Bobby Brister. Oh, You're a boy. Shout out to Bobby Brister. Bobby Brister is probably my, my favorite named human of it's all times. That's a that is a great name. They, they, yeah. They've had some. They've had some. I mean, Sam Hughes played pet, quarterback I'm for them. Yeah, Bobby Brister. Uh, I mean, they even had some. I mean, they 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 got some nice little talent there. Larry Wiggum, Step Fred Williams. Uh, Ma- oh man, Marty Booker. Hold on, let me Marty pull Booker up, was uh, a good Vincent Brisby. Some of the guys. Jackie been, Harris. Dang, the database doesn't even have to look. That's that's really impressive. Uh, they had they've only had four players drafted since 2000. Those are tough times. I mean, but you know it all comes back around, buddy. You know who loves them? Who's that? The Chicago Bears have drafted three out of their last Marty six Booker. players. Uh, Marty Booker. Marty Booker. He was a beast. Chris Harris, the defensive back. Oh, I them. like Chris Harris. Yeah. And then uh, Kevin Payne, another defensive I think back. I, f- I think them. I forgot that Chris Harris went there. I like Chris Harris. There you go. Most recently, Marcus Green. Mm. 2019 to the Atlanta Falcons wide receiver. So if you're, if you're on, uh, on YouTube here, you're going to see the sweet ass graphic behind me where Las Vegas basically projects how they think this team will do. And Patty C, I gotta be honest. I was a bit shocked, a bit shocked to see uh, two and a half wins because they won four last year when they were projected to win two. So they doubled it up. That doesn't mean, uh, and they return a ton. They do return a ton, but I think if I had to guess, a lot of that projection again was based on Rich Rodriguez and really? what he did at West Virginia. How about this and oh. Arizona? How about uh, let me just rattle off. So he was one and eleven at Akron in 2012. The second year he was five and seven. Yeah, four game improvement. Now at North Alabama he did go from eleven and two to nine and four, but I, I just think the more the, the Salem three and seven, eight and three. Now at Samford, yes, that didn't that didn't that wasn't the case, but I just feel like this guy's gonna field a decently competitive team. I think without a doubt, like Terry Bowden has proven that he can build a program, you know. And I think year one is gonna be all, he's the type of coach, he's old school. It's strike he, That's what I'm saying. I think year two they'll be better than year one. Yeah, he he it doesn't look like he's really building through the portal, but he's he's been doing this for so long. His dad is freaking Bobby Bowden. His track record speaks for itself. I do think the number seems kind of low based on what you would expect, but we do need to take a look at that schedule. To- well, let's hop into it. Week one, Saturday, September 3rd. I cannot wait. God's eye will be rocking. Patty C <laughs> Texas, the Texas Longhorns. They were five and seven a year ago. They lost to Kansas. Look, Texas has Alabama on deck. Look ahead spot. You want to talk about look the ahead spot. Biggest upset. I don't think uh, I don't think Sarkeesian comes back from that. <laughs> I think it's over right there on the spot. I don't know if they fire him right away, but Please. it's over. Yeah. Come on, Terry Bowden, let's go. <laughs> uh, um, uh, L, right? We're giving L. him an L. L. Well, week two, the Colonels of Nickel. Nichols, I'm sorry, Nichols, Lindsey Scott. They have a high-powered offense. Yeah. Hey. I, I do think ULM's going to win, but buckle up. Nichols' defense has been trash, but their offense can fire away. And last year they kind of took a step back, but before that, what did they put up like like seventy? I feel like on something. Five yeah. on uh, somebody, right? Wisconsin. They put up eighty-seven on uh, <laughs> Lincoln, Missouri. <laughs> they can fire Seven, that thing yeah. around. I'm taking ULM to get the dub. Yeah. All right. So one and one. They travel to Alabama. Shout out to Alabama going out of their way, scheduling, you know, a, a very Sheesh. prestigious program. They go to Texas and Alabama in the first three weeks that's, that's of the ridiculous. season. That's ridiculous. Terry Bowden, you'll be my hero if you can do even do one. I mean, you're not going to do Alabama. Yeah. Texas, maybe. Not really. So one and two. Yeah. And then they're home to the Louisiana Raging Cajuns who went 13 and one last year, Petty C. 
Again, the score of this game last was close. year was 20, close. 21 to 16 in Lafayette. However, teams that play Bama the next week have a terrible record. Yeah. I'm on I'm on Louisiana. It's where they catch them. I I actually was was thinking ULM would upset Louisiana this year before I saw where Louisiana catches them. Yeah, coming off Bama, meanwhile uh Louisiana is coming off Rice. Yes, slightly different uh lead up. So 1 and 3 in September. Like I said, you just need two wins to hit the over. You just need two wins and by the way, that juice if you were two wondering. More. Yeah. That the the under is p- playing at 105, the over's playing at uh minus 125. So Vegas if they had to they would say three and nine would be their lean, but there's, that's not crazy juice going against it. If you, if you feel good about it, take it. Patty C October starts with a bang. They hit the road to Centennial bank stadium in Jonesboro to take on Arkansas state. They almost beat them last year. They did almost beat them last year, but look, uh, according to sports reference, this is their second most played rivalry behind Louisiana Lafayette. And uh, they are seven and 21 in this series. Not good. Eight and twenty-one. Uh, Give me the dub on the road. That would be impressive. Look, wait, let me pull this up. They have lost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve straight in this series. You think this is the year they turn it around? I okay. I'll put it like this. <sighs> yeah, give me the win. Give Butch me the win. Jones has a way of botch. They yeah. should be botch Jones. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Botch Jones is going to botch this one. Who are you taking? I got to take Arkansas State based on the history there. So you're one and four. I'm at I'm at two and three, right? Yeah. They're they're hosting Coastal Carolina. Could this be an upset potentially? But I can't take that. Grayson McCall, Jamie Chadwell, the mullet is alive and real in, in Conway. But this is in Malone Stadium. I'm taking Coastal. You, Petty C. I'm taking Coastal. So I got him now at two and four. You got him at one and five. Yeah. They're at South Alabama. This is winnable. Didn't they beat them last year? What was that game? They did win 41 to 31 in Monroe. We are going to mobile for this one. This is a winnable game though. This is one. I know Desmond Trotter's back with with South Alabama, but this is like a 50, 50 game to me. Give me the Jaguars. Really? Yeah. I don't know though. This is where Terry Bowden makes his money. You know, winnable games, 50, 50 games. Let's see if he's got it. History suggests All right, look, he I will. took Arkansas State before on the road. I mean, they beat them last year. Yeah. This is on the road, though. I'm taking South Alabama for this one. Okay. So I got them at what? Two and five? I got them at one and six. Bat another back to back away. They're at Army. See, but Army plays down. Ball State beat Army last year. This is a tricky game. <laughs> and and don't forget, Patty C. The ULM did knock off Liberty last year. They did. Yeah. They're, they're capable. Um that's a long trip. Back to back away, triple option. I'll take Army. I'll take Army. Yeah, of course. So I got them still a two and two and what six? Two and six. I got them one and seven. But here they get a buy. Yeah. And then they take on Texas State in Monroe Stadium, or I'm sorry, in uh, Malone Stadium in Monroe. They did lose in San Marcos last year, twenty-seven to nineteen. This is a dub. I think it may be. This is a dub for me. Okay. And you know what that means? Almost. Cha ching for me. Oh, you're you're cashing right there. I think between South Alabama and Arkansas State, they get one. Nichols is the other, and then hosting Texas State, that's three. By the way, this team plays seven away games. That's fucking ridiculous. That is stupid. That's like FCS, but two sets of back-to-back away games. They're almost FCS level. Um, so then they they you you have them beating Texas State, correct? Uh, I guess so. Texas State was what two and two no, and they ten won last four. year. They went four. Oh, they won four. Yeah. Two years ago, they won yeah. two. That's tough, man. I mean, the fact that it's in Monroe, Louisiana, that's a fifty fit. That's a coin toss. So I'm gonna put that as a coin toss game paired with one other one. Okay, well they traveled to Center Park Stadium where Dale Murphy used to crank homers to take on Georgia State. I think they lose that game. I do think they lose that game. Yeah. They follow that with another away game at Veterans Stadium, Veterans Memorial Stadium, Patty C. Um, the take on the Troy Trojans. <laughs> Veterans Memorial. Man, you take the two most generic <laughs> stadium names and jam them together. Uh, uh, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Troy. Uh, I'm gonna take Troy too. Troy, did they play last year? They did. Actually, ULM beat Troy uh twenty nine to sixteen in Monroe. <laughs> I'll say this between Troy and Southern Miss, 
He he pulls another win. He goes four and eight, same as last year, and then next year's the big jump. I agree. I, I think they get to three this year, and I think uh, it's that one out of those last two we just mentioned. And I think next year you're looking at six and six or something like that. Well, hopefully they get you know some kind of so, something in the recruiting portal. The, the recruiting or uh, in the transfer portal, the recruiting isn't doing anything. But maybe he just develops players. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. Let's go. I'm on the over. I know I've been on a streak of overs right now. You I'm love sh- a good over. Don't worry though. I think what we have Maryland and Miami coming up. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm Shane sure the owners will, will start. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. Subscribe to the College Football Experience. We're both on the over here. We're breaking down every single team in the land, as I mentioned before. Also, subscribe on YouTube. We are the College Football Experience. And remember, ULM fans. Subscribe to the college basketball experience because we cover the Warhawks over there too. We talk college basketball year round over there. We talk college football year round over here. All right. Uh, also, subscribe to the college baseball experience if that's your thing. Me and Noah Beanick do that. And also, subscribe to the Sports Gambling Podcast. We just had who? Pat McAfee on, Mike Leach. Go check out the, the, the SGP show, the main feed. That is fantastic. And uh, yeah, uh, look, if you go to iTunes and give us a five star review on the college football experience, Take a screenshot, show us that on Twitter, either uh, from my account at TC or, or, or at the Colby D. I'm sorry, or the College Football Experience Twitter account at TCE on SGPN. And if you show me that, we'll send you a College Football Experience. Wow. If you're watching on YouTube, it'll look like that pennant. Uh, Patty C is on Twitter at Patty C831. NC Nick is on Twitter at NC underscore N I C K. We are the College Football Experience. Follow us all. We certainly appreciate that. And uh, remember, Get the SGPN app. Check out the Discord channel. Check out all the other gambling podcasts that we have. I mean, our network is fantastic. The MLB gambling podcast. I know baseball's thriving right now. Uh, the CFL gambling podcast. Maybe you're just football crazed. Or the USFL gambling podcast. We host the USFL gambling podcast. Their season came to an end, but great first year. The New Orleans Breakers in the mix made the playoffs. We got you covered uh, as we host that one. As far as like me, Patty C, and NC Nick. Oh There's, yeah, but all of our stuff, soccer gambling podcast, the world cups around the corner, uh, the NBA gambling podcast with Terrell Furman, WNBA gambling podcast, just you, anywhere you lay your hat is your home. If you ever been to Oak lawn in, uh, in Arkansas, check out the uh, notorious OTB. Cause we have the wolf of Oak lawn handicapping horse races. Boom. Uh, I mean, he goes to Oak lawn most often, but he, he handicaps all the horses, all the races out there. So check out all those feeds. Zed run with our boy, Scott Bowser. Uh, just, just, I think you'll be, look, it's free. You got no, no excuse. All right. I think you'll dig all that stuff. So, uh, Patty C anything else to say about your, your ULM squad? You, you were all, you nailed it last year. He's saying over again, I'm saying over again. I just think, Hey, Terry Bowden, show us more of that Bowden magic. There we go. This is the college football experience. ULM Warhawk style. You better start thinking about yours and we out of here. Run and shoot.